Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting abstract woman blue <laughs> and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Merlot. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 canvas. You could certainly switch up the size if you'd like, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today and the colors are titanium white, green oxide, cobalt blue, deep yellow, Mars Black, Burnt Sienna, which I'll call Rust, and Burnt Umber, which I'll call Brown. And for my tools today, I'm gonna to be using a standard number two pencil, and I've got two brushes that I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush and a number 10 round brush, and I'll refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process. And I have a really fancier tool today that I'm gonna be using, which is two pieces of copy paper. <laughs> so you'll see how we use those later. Um, and then if you're painting along with me, you're also gonna need a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I do have a couple of additional resources for you. Um, one of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the pieces of paper too. <laughs> the same colored paints and all that good stuff. Um, so that's down there for you. And there's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be doing a very loose sketch of our figure. I'm gonna be using a my pencil to do so. I'm gonna make a couple of markers so I can kind of guide you in how to make um, a loose sketch. Remember, it doesn't have to be anything perfect. We're just going for a nice abstract a abstraction of the human form. So what I'm gonna have you do is make a couple of markers. Um, you're gonna kind of go into the center of your canvas and come down I'd say this is about a third of the way down your canvas and just make yourself a little mark. Then you're gonna travel over to the right hand side and stop when you've got about an inch and a half to go and then just come down maybe about another inch, make yourself a mark. And then you're gonna kind of visually go between these two and come on down, maybe a little more to the left, come on down until you're about maybe, if this is your halfway mark of your canvas, maybe a little bit below there and make yourself a third mark. So what we're going to do is just connect these two like this and then we're going to do a vertical line. I guess you could um, kind of go a little bit above here and make yourself another marker just so you know where to stop, maybe a little bit to the right. And then you can connect these two. So we're making ourselves kind of a, a sideways T and this is going to represent like the spine and this will represent kind of the, the shoulder-esque area. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a little bit of a neck and then just kind of round out my shoulder, make myself, which I'll go a little bit to the left of that line and a little bit to the right of this line, make myself a little bit of a shoulder. And then I'm going to bring down my arm, the outside of the arm, and it's going to come a little bit higher than this marker here. So maybe about here and come out to here. So here we go. I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit and then just a little bit out, something like that. And then I'm gonna go maybe to about, come in diagonally, maybe about an inch or inch and a half. And now I'm gonna do the other side of that arm. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the right side of the body. So I'm gonna come down a little bit from here to maybe about halfway between here and the elbow. And I'm gonna make myself a mark coming in for a waist and then out for a hip. And yours can be as voluptuous or as slender as you want. You make it as 
whatever shape you, that you'd like. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm just gonna kind of bring this arm down in this fashion somewhere around here. I think I'm gonna have this one stop a little bit higher than this one, so something like that. Then I'm gonna come diagonal into here, and then I'm making myself just that inside of the arm, just stopping it somewhere in this vicinity. Come down the arm a little bit, and then I'm gonna make myself another side to the body. And the waist doesn't have to be super cinched at the same exact spot. Uh, lots of human bodies are different from one side to the next, so don't worry if they don't aren't exactly the same. So something like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a hat. So I know that I want this to be a really big floppy kind of beach hat. So I need it to be kind of placed in the right spot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come about halfway between the top of her neck and the top of my canvas and just go straight up and make yourself a little bit of a marker. Now I'm gonna make myself kind of an oval um, that goes oh, probably about halfway between here and here is gonna be the width of it, so something like this and then it's just gonna kinda of come up like this. It's gotta sit on her head, so we've gotta kinda of get it positioned in, in a kind of a realistic spot, and I only have it coming just past her neck on the left-hand side. Now I'm gonna make the big floppy brim. I'm gonna start maybe somewhere about here, and I'm gonna bring it out past her shoulder. So this is gonna come way out here, and I'm gonna curve it back, and then it's gonna come and dip down. You can even hide more of her neck if you think that her neck is too long or you wanna hide it. You could even have ripples going along the edge of this hat. You make it as fun as you want. And then I'm gonna go kind of directly diagonal from that, somewhere in through here, make myself the edge of my hat over on this side. And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to, I think I want this a little bit taller. Let's give that hat a little bit more height, something like this. I want that to be a big beach hat. I think that works. Okay, so now I'm gonna do kind of the outline of my, um, my, my um, shirt or blanket or whatever is gonna be on the bottom of her, her skirt. I don't know what to call it, but something that's gonna cover her legs <laughs> and her hands. So I'm gonna start over here. I'm just gonna make myself a little curved line and I'm gonna just kind of slope it down. And if you want this up higher, feel free to do so. It's gotta come and touch this arm over here. So this has to kind of naturally slope and meet each other. And then I'm just gonna kind of bring this out here, maybe make it, gravity's gonna take over at some point. So I'm just gonna kind of get this to come down in through here. I'm gonna scoop it in just a little bit and then I'm gonna get it to come all the way down to this, almost to the corner like that. And then on the right hand side, I'm gonna give it a nice bump in through here maybe come down a little bit like this and then just kind of scoot out like this. I want it to look like it's flowing in the wind. So something like that. And that's all we're gonna do for the sketch. We're gonna go to our uh, big brush for the next step so you can just get ready for that. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first layer of the background. So I'm gonna be using my large brush and the colors that I'm using are blue, white, green, and brown. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna be using blue and white up at the top, and then I'm gonna transition into using blue, green, and white. And then as I get down kind of towards her waist area, that's when I'm gonna start transitioning into just brown and white. I might use more brown over here, but I definitely want the, my, my abstracted brain <laughs> is wanting this to kind of almost look like ocean beachy kind of like maybe she, maybe she's walking off into the into the ocean so um so i'm pretending like that top is either ocean or sky um and then this is going to be beach down here so that's where my that's where my little artistic brain is going right now so i'm going to use a lot of paint i'm going to use a very chaotic brush stroke um and when I get to near her, I'm not really gonna care too much if it's if I perfectly execute it. I really just wanna make sure I've got a full coat on that background. But again, if it's not perfectly executed or if you use different brush strokes, don't worry about it. We've got lots of stuff we're gonna put on top of it. So here we go. I'm starting with blue and white, and maybe I just start with this chaotic kind of left to right motion 
just to kind of get some paint on there. I am using a lot of paint because we're gonna be um, drying our canvases in between steps. So it's okay if you use a lot of paint. I just picked up white with a touch of green. I just wanna make sure that I've got the entire canvas covered or the background covered and I can use a lot of paint. <laughs> so just know that feel free to just have fun. Abstract is supposed to be a freeing and enjoyable experience. So just do that. Just, you know, if you want to do circles or if you want to be like wild and crazy and just start, you know, getting this paint on in squiggles or whatever you want, have fun. That's what this is about. Use your imagination. Let your hand just go wild. I don't want to forget these little areas in through here, so I'm just adding that color on now so I don't forget. That's a great area that will easily be forgotten. Um, and when I transition past those arms, I want to make sure the color kind of makes sense, so I'm going to keep those colors on my brush. So now I'm just picking up more white, and in a minute I'm going to start picking up some brown. I don't wash my brush throughout this process because I really, really want it to all just kind of visually kind of meld together and make it look like it's it's abstract. I mean, abstract is just kind of taking a um, what would be a visual reference and distorting it. So you can, you know, it, use whatever kind of interpretation that you want. Again, I have not washed my brush. Um, and right now I am gonna start to just pick up brown. I picked up brown and white a minute ago, but right now I'm gonna start to pick up brown because I really want this to be pretty dark down at the bottom. So I'm getting right near her her skirt or whatever we're gonna call this, her beach wear. That's what we're gonna call it, her beach wear. <laughs> Once we get past or down next to that, I really want it to be kind of nice and dark. And you can see I'm just kind of wiggling my brush, just making sure that I've got a whole bunch of paint on there and whatever color happens, happens. And I just wanna make sure that they kind of transition well together because um, I don't want just firm lines of where one color meets, meets the next. And you can see I had a little blue left over on my brush, which is awesome. And then we're gonna switch brushes to our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this first layer of the background on here, you can put this large brush away in your water cup and take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the body and I, or the skin of the body. I'm gonna be using my um, small brush and the colors that I'm using are black, brown, rust, yellow, and white. Um, and I'm gonna do this again in an abstract, fun kind of way. Um, but I do wanna make sure that certain things are, um, are kind of interpreted when somebody's looking at this. I do wanna kinda um, show maybe a, a dip in the spine or maybe a little bit of um, shadows underneath those armpits and maybe a little bit underneath the hat. So I'm gonna start with brown and a touch of black on my brush. And I'm just gonna kind of start with a couple of darker areas and then I'll work my way towards the light. This way, um, it, during this abstract painting process, I'll still have some semblance of um, normalcy where it, it makes sense um, and, and that her, the edges of her body don't get lost when we start putting on all those fun colors. So now that I've done that, now what I'm gonna do is I'm picking up brown and rust and I'm just gonna start to make sure I've got enough of like a skin type color underneath here. And I'm really just gonna start to have fun once I've got um, some of this rust on here. I'm gonna start to pick up yellow and white. And now I'm just gonna start to really in a free kind of um, brush stroke, just kind of make stripes. I'm not even concerned if I lose part of her shape. Um, I do want to make sure that I've got full coverage, but you can paint one color over another. Um, I want this to really be abstract. So 
I just picked up brown, rust, yellow, and white so I can get some of these additional colors on the back just to kind of meld in with one another. I'm giving her a little, making sure I've got her shoulder on here. I am concentrating on covering the pencil marks though. Um, so just make sure that you end up covering your pencil marks as well, getting her whole arm to come down and touch that um, piece of clothing that she's wearing. <laughs> which I still don't know what I should be calling it. I probably should have looked that up before I decided to, to paint it. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't go to the beach very often and wear bathing attire or non-bathing attire like she is, but whatever that is, it could be, hmm, I don't know. We'll just call it a, a flowing skirt thing. <laughs> I wear sweatpants a lot, just for the record. Um, so now that I've got this, I can kind of sit here and just tweak it and make sure that I've got nice full coverage. I've got a little bit of a shadow underneath her armpits, so that way we really can tell that there's, you know, maybe some light and dark areas. I've got her spine kind of showing a little bit here. And if you went too far and it's not exactly as you want, don't worry because we're gonna disguise it with a whole another layer later anyways. So we are gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your body, your skin covered, you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting her clothing. I'm gonna use my big brush and I'm gonna be using black, brown, and white. And I'm gonna go from dark to light because I want there to look like there's um, folds and movement to her, um, to this piece of clothing. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start with black and then I'm gonna use a little bit of brown and then I'm gonna end with white. So here we go. I'm gonna use my black to kind of put the folds in place. So I know I want one here and one in through here. So I'm just gonna kind of lightly dust on some black paint. Maybe I've got one in through here, I've got one here, and then it's gonna kind of flow into this area. So now that I've got some brown on there, I'm, or some black, I'm just gonna pick up some brown and I'm not washing my brush. And I'm just gonna kind of put additional little waves of this piece of clothing in, into play, something like this. But you can see I'm not overdoing it because I know in a, in a second I'm gonna start picking up white and white is what's going to kind of get all of these to blend together. Um, so now that I've got a little bit of brown on there, I'm going, if you have a ton of paint on your brush, just wipe it off on your paper towel. But I'm gonna pick up a ton of white. So I've got a lot of white on my brush with those, you know, the remnants of the black and the brown. That's gonna help me to add this really cool effect to it. So I'm coming over to the sides. I'm making sure that I've got some of these ripple, ripples in this piece of cloth. I'm gonna go over here and blending it in a little bit with the um, darker colors, but, and you could blend it a lot or a little. It's, it, this is abstract, it's all whatever is visually appealing to you. I definitely want there to look like there's some movement in this back here, so I'm making sure that I've got like a wave on it. And then this is gonna kind of come together in this spot. And then I'm just gonna have some fun. Maybe pick up a little bit more brown on my brush just to get, maybe this is a little bit more shadow down in through here. Maybe this comes over here. And then I'm just gonna put as much paint on here as I want. I can have some light spots and some dark spots as long as I, it's interpreted to me as, as this is a moving piece of cloth. I've done what all I've set out to do. So um, at that point, once I've, once I've accomplished my goal, then I just start having some fun. This looks pretty cool to me. Um, and then we're gonna use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your, your clothing all nice and waving in the wind, you can wash and dry this big brush and just get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the hat. We're painting the hat with the big brush. So I'm gonna use the same colors that I used down here, black, brown, and white. Um, but I'm gonna be 
not making it as wavy as here because it's just a hat. <laughs> so what I really want to do is kind of just give the idea that there's a shadowy part here and maybe a shadowy part back here and then the rest I'm going to do nice and light. So I'm actually going to put brown and black on my brush to start and I'm just going to kind of bring a nice swooping kind of motion in through here and then I'm going to do the same thing on the top part. So I'm just going to kind of bring this swooping motion. And now I'm not gonna wash my brush, I'm just picking up white paint, and I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna finish my hat with whatever remnants I have on my brush from that shadowy part. And you'll end up with some light areas and some dark areas, and whatever happens, happens. You just have fun doing it. Um, I'm gonna do this section, and if you need to add or want to add more black or brown to the equation, feel free to do so. I'm gonna kinda get it on here and then I might I might choose to add a little bit more of the black and the brown just so it's got some more, I don't know, maybe a little bit more movement, but let's see, what do I want? Maybe a little bit more in through here. I don't know, I'm just having fun. That's a, Abstract art is really about your intuition. So you sit here and you're looking at it and you're like, hmm, what do I want to do? Just do whatever intuitively comes to you. So if you want more darkness in one spot, put more darkness in, in one spot. If you want more lightness in another, put more lightness in another. It's, it's your painting. You're, you're making it visually whatever is working for you at that moment. So once you've got your hat done, we are going to be... Um, using our paper for the next step. <laughs> so you can put all of your brushes away um, and take out your piece of, what, both of your pieces of paper and get ready for the next step. All right, so before we start this step, I just wanna kinda give you a little forewarning to dry your canvas. So um, you can either, you know, take a break and sip some more if your canvas isn't dry, or you can blow on it. <laughs> or you can just take a blow dryer and dry your canvas because you really want it dry before this next step. So what we're going to be doing is we're doing our paper streaks. <laughs> so I'm going to be using my fancy piece of paper and what I do is I'm just going to crimple it up once and then I'm going to uncrimple it because I like to crimple it nice and tight so it makes tons of wrinkles and then I'm going to, but that's too tight to do the technique I want. So then I uncrimple it this makes for really good TV, right? And then I'm gonna recrumple it only looser, like don't squish it wicked hard. And now I have all of these great little scratchy areas that are gonna create a super fun effect. So what I'm gonna, the colors I'm gonna be using, um, the dominant color is white. But after I do my white streaks, if I want to, I can go back and add some more brown or some more green. Or if I want to add maybe a little bit of yellow somewhere else, like a little bit of sunshine over here, I can certainly do that. Um, I'm gonna start with white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip my paper into my white. And then I'm just gonna kind of wipe it off on the side of my palette, or you could pat it on a paper towel or something. And then when I go to do this, I'm not pressing hard. If you press really hard, you're gonna get a big flat glob of paint. So I just kind of, to get myself started, I just kind of start at the top and just kind of tap it from the top and just pull it down. And then once I've got it pulled down a little bit, I can start going back and forth, left to right. I just go up and down and left to right. You could certainly do diagonals. You could really incorporate whatever fancy paper streaking technique that you would like to do. And if you do too much in one area, don't worry. We've got a touch up time that we will be adding um, any further details that you want. I'm reloading right now because I feel like I want to. And if you feel like you've got some flat spots, you can always just take your paper and just recrumple it in another direction. Now you've got a fresh dry spot. That's why you have two pieces of paper. So if you get to a point where this one's just overloaded and you have too much paint on it, just do the same thing to your second piece of paper. So I'm getting some more white paint on my piece of fancy brush here that I'm using. And I'm just gonna kinda keep going until I have as much of this 
technique throughout the painting as I want. You can really um, make your painting super soft and you can really um, add these gentle effects to it, you know, just making sure that you don't push super hard. And I feel like I have a flat spot on my piece of paper, so I'm just wiggling it or crunching it another way. And I'm gonna start over just so I can get this all on here. And I'm going over the entire canvas. Maybe you want to have this effect more dominant in one area as opposed to another area. So it's totally up to you, whatever your visual preference is. Um, and then once I've got it as much as I want with the white, I'll start using a different color, but I'm just re-crinkling my paper here. It's, it's a personal preference. You're gonna get your rhythm and you're gonna say, ooh, I want more you know, crinkles or less crinkles. You can also, like I'm doing here, wiping it on my paper towel. I totally like these um, streaks, so I wanna make sure I have plenty represented all over the place. I think I want this to go left to right. And once I've got as many as I want, and you can you can see I keep working them. You could even do dots if you wanted to have like more of a sponge type effect. Um, if you wanted it to look like it's raining, just do them all straight down. Whatever works for you is totally fine. It's your painting. You don't necessarily need it to look exactly like mine. That's the beauty of this type of painting. It's intuitive. You just do what you feel is right. And I think I am gonna add maybe a little bit of brown and maybe a touch of yellow over in this area, make it look a little bit more beachy-esque over here. Maybe I'll dab it a little bit. Mm. See, I told you I was just gonna at some point just go and, and do whatever comes to me and I totally want a little bit of, of the softer yellowy tones in through here. So I'm just kind of dabbing it. Maybe I'll put a little thing off in the distance that maybe it looks like a little bit of an island or something that she's just gazing at or, or going to. You can put some more, you know, sand if that's what you're looking for or streaks. You can add all kinds of stuff. Hmm. I, it's, it's hard to stop on these paintings. <laughs> I just kind of stomped my feet a little bit because I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> so I just put a little bit of green on my, on my brush. This isn't a brush, on my, on my application tool, my piece of paper. So I'm gonna add a little bit in her hat. Oh yeah. So you can paint with your paper. It's just super fun. I think I'm gonna add a little streak on the top of her hat, something in through here. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. Maybe a little bit of, oh, I'm gonna switch my paper. I want a new piece of paper. Hold the phone, because I wanna I wanna add some, some yellow. Sorry, I went out of camera view for a second. Crimple, 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 nice and tight. Loosen it. my sound effects. Now I'm gently crinkling. I'm gonna add a touch of yellow onto my brush and maybe white too, yellow and white. Maybe I'll put some beautiful little kind of streaks along the side of her piece of clothing. Oh uh, yeah. See, just do what comes, comes to you. And maybe a little more white on her hat. Yeah, see? It's, I can tell you once you get going though, it's super hard to stop. So I think, I think I'm good. I, I think I'm gonna call this step and then um, we're gonna use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your super cool streaks in place, you can put your fancy piece of paper away and just get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step now that we've had all of that fun with our paper tool is we're gonna use our small brush and we are gonna be painting the tassel, our bow part of her hat. So you could really use any colors that you want, but I'm gonna be using black, brown, and white. Um, I'm gonna start with black and brown on my brush and all I'm gonna really do is a little circle here and a couple of like ribbons that are just gonna flow down her back. Um, so I'm gonna start, if this is kind of, if you look at the oval and this is the center, I'm gonna go to the 
left so it almost looks like it's at the back of the hat, I guess. And I'm going to just kind of make myself a really messy circle. I'm not going to go full on into it right now because I'm going to put white in a second. And then I want these to kind of look like they're nice and flowy. So I'm going to do something like that. And then maybe I'll do one over here. And you can strategically place them too. If, if there's something that you're like, oh, I wish I had done something else there, put the ribbon in front of it. It totally works out. Now I'm just going to put some white paint on my brush and I'm just going to kind of give this a little, a little couple of streaks of a highlight. Make sure it's not too dominant in its color. And just a couple of little flicks with my brush with some white on with my dirty brush on top of the wet paint. And then we have, ah, that's pretty. We have one last step to go. So once you've got your ribbon on your hat, you can, we're gonna use the same brush so you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step, which is the final step of any painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. And I think I'm gonna sign this, hmm. I think I'm gonna sign it in the bottom left corner and I'm gonna be using black paint. I do my initials, um, but you could certainly use your first name or you could sign it with the date. You can really have fun with um, your signature. It's your identifying mark, so you have fun with it. Sign it whatever way you want. I guess I'm having a little abstract signature today. <laughs> I'm using a larger brush than I normally do for my signature, so I'm just going with the flow on it, I guess. Um, and then that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you really enjoyed this abstract process and you created yourself a fun um, rendition of this and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.